guys, <clears throat> excuse me. Hi. So I have to record this on Zoom because I was trying to record with just my camera um, application or like web-based application stuff and it kept on freezing. So fingers crossed that this works, that it comes through, um, that it doesn't jump around. Um, I wanted to do this live, but my internet has also been a little bit janky. So um, again, fingers crossed because I, you know, that was... That was a big thing about not wanting to do it on Zoom because I have to have internet to do it on Zoom. So, um, welcome back, I guess. Like, I'm welcoming myself back. Uh, I don't know. We're going to talk about the solar eclipse and the Saturn, uh, the Saturn and Pluto conjunction that's happening this weekend. Before we get into, and I'm actually going to show you charts and stuff. That's why it was such a big deal that my, my camera kept on freezing. When I would try to show the charts, it would just stop. So, that's why we're doing it this way. Um, uh, so before we start that, I keep on pulling off track. Before we start that, uh, if you didn't get a chance to be a part of the workshop this last weekend, it was amazing. The workshop was about being in the present moment. That replay is available. And during this, and the reason why I wanted to, to start it in January, I'm not going to do another live for it, maybe for a while. I don't even know if I'm going to. So the replay might be your only option. But it was amazing because um, everything that I teach in workshops, I literally live in my life. So I'm not giving you guys anything that I haven't already done. And everything that I taught in the workshop on Sunday, I literally got another, like a re-crash course in everything. Because it started, that workshop, I started, it, it was birthed basically in the summer with my last workshop, um, when my last workshop was birthed as well. And they kind of go hand in hand. So you didn't... If you didn't see the previous workshop that actually the replay for November and the previous workshop, they're both available as replays now. Um, but yeah, I had to go through a whole crash course like the week before. And I, I talked to you all about it in the workshop. Um, and it was wonderful because I actually had to use my own techniques to get back to good. And that was, it was, I was like a testimony to myself, like a testimony to doing. So if you didn't get a chance to do the replay, I'm going to highly recommend it. Um, it's cheaper than a reading, you guys. And personally, uh, I feel like uh, like my job is to give you guys the tools to get to to help you find the answers yourselves. Um, it's not that I want to be out of a job, but my tool is to teach you guys. It's not just to give you the answers. That's what a good leader, that's what a good teacher does, and that's what I was built for. So I'm I'm you know I have a really hard time giving people answers um, a lot of the times because it's not what they want to hear. So if you truly know who you are on the inside, it's so much easier to, to answer your own question. So that's what the workshop's going to help. Both of them, actually, the one in November and then the one from Sunday. Also, the meditations are really, really helpful during this super heavy time. Um, you know, it's so funny because even people that don't know what's going on in the skies or what's happening right now are still having a hard time dealing with it. Like, they're still having a hard time dealing with these energies because they are they're, they're um, affecting the collective as well as all of us on an individual level. So um, it's very, very important to stay grounded. And if you don't know who you are and you're not being 100% honest about the things that you need to fix in your life and you're just kind of living up in la-la land and illusion land and, and yada-da, love and light land, this energy is really, really hard on you. Um, for the people that are like really super sweet souls that don't um, dig deep into their darkness, this energy is very, very hard on them right now. So make sure you're checking up on all your people. Um, if you do need a personal reading with me, I am taking personal readings. I'm also doing astrology chart readings. There's a full array of astrology chart readings. Everything is on my website um, if you need it. Oh, and if you have been missing out on the daily readings, I am posting on the community tab. I'm posting on Instagram, I'm posting on Twitter, um, charts, um, ener chart energies, and card energies. Every single day that I was sick, I did that. So if you're missing out on that, make sure you've got my, that bell, that notification bell hit. Um, otherwise, you're not getting notified or you're not seeing that stuff when you scroll. Um, I guarantee you, if you check the community tab by 10 o'clock in the morning every day from last week or you know, even this morning, I did it. So even if there's not a daily reading, there will be something on the community tab, most likely. Okay, 
So <laughs> the moment has come. I literally tried this like three other times in another program and it just didn't work. So, okay. So first we're going to look at, oh, look at that prettiness. First, we are going to look at the Cancer Eclipse. So I have it set for Kansas City time, because that's where I am, um, for January 10th at 1.21 p.m. Central Standard Time. So this is going to be, it's going to be the same time. It's going to happen everywhere. So it'll be like at 2.21 p.m. in East Coast, and it'll be at 11.21 a.m. on the West Coast, or yeah, and anywhere else. I don't know, like you're gonna have to look at your own time zone. Please don't ask me in the comments what, what it is in your time zone. You will have to look, just look based on 2.21 p.m. Eastern time, whatever time that is for you on January 10th. Uh, I am not a world time clock, <laughs> so I have no idea. Um, okay, so the biggest things about this I want you to recognize is the moon in Cancer. And the moon in Cancer, the moon rules uh, or I'm sorry, um, the fourth house is, is what rules cancer, right? And the moon actually rules the fourth house. So it's um, basically cancer's planet is the moon, okay? And cancer is, you know, with the fourth house, it's about home, it's about security, it's about safety, it's about feeling good, it's about nurturing, all of that. So, um, you know, when the moon is in Cancer anyways, we all have this like really like, uh, kind of like flowy feeling and very, very intuitive. Um, but it is directly across, and if you look over here, and I wish I had something to write with, um, but right here up in the ninth house region, we have um, both Mercury and the sun are both at 20 degrees as well. So we are directly, the moon is directly opposite Mercury and the sun in the ninth house, okay? Um, in, and this is in Capricorn. And, and, you know, the ninth house based on the rising sign. The rising sign at the moment during the moon, say, is Taurus rising. At, or during the eclipse will be Taurus rising, okay? Um, this can, this like just opposite here, you know, when the moon and Mercury are opposite and the moon and the sun, like moon and sun opposite are, that can be, um, like if you look at that in a natal chart, that's saying basically that your parents didn't get along when you were a child. Like I have moon square my sun or my sun squares my moon and it's the same energy where you're you're like one parent was more probably more aggressive and the other one was a little bit more docile. And, um, you know, you probably have a harder relationship with one parent than you do the other. So this is what the world is feeling. It's almost as if like, <laughs> like they're being ripped apart at the core because first we have this really super nurturing, nurturing, nurturing Cancerian energy. And then we have this sun energy in Capricorn, the masculine side of it saying, you know, kind of beating down on the moon. And literally now the moon is going to eclipse that, right? The moon is totally eclipsing the sun. And it's, um, or the sun is totally eclipsing the moon. So that's the, that, yeah, the other way, right? So, um, and it's going to be, a, actually it's just a partial eclipse. It's not a total eclipse this time. It's just a partial eclipse. But really, and then Mercury, there's, and, and there is this war right now with the patriarch, right? There's a lot of toxic, masculine energy in the government, in the patriarch system right now. And eclipses are about endings. Point blank. Eclipses are about endings. I honestly would not be surprised if in the next week, Betsy, I have never predicted anything off of astrology before, um, but I would not be surprised in the next week if we hear about some serious male masculine, toxic masculine energies in Hollywood, in the media, somewhere falling with all of it, because Saturn and Pluto is extremely, like this is a very karmic transformational change of time. And we're gonna get to Saturn and Pluto in a minute, but I wanna show you that Saturn and Pluto conjunction, like they're basically conjunct already. They'll be exact two days after this eclipse but we're literally only like 10 seconds away from each other. So 
we're really already, we're already, con and you guys have been feeling this energy for weeks, okay? But that's not the only thing that's happening, okay? So this karmic stuff is happening here with the Saturn and Pluto conjunction, and we have Mercury that's opposite the moon, um, we have the sun that's opposite the moon, the masculine is overriding the feminine in that energy right now, and and um, then over here, <laughs> we have our own little cluster. If we knock ourselves right over here, still in Capricorn energy, I mean, we have one, two, three, four, five, six positions, aspects, the stelium, and, and literally the babies that have been born, when did this start? End of November? Or no, it was like mid-December. Mid-December is when the stelium really started about mid-December, like babies that have been born mid-December on <laughs> with this Capricorn stelium, oh, oy vey, those poor little babies, they're going to be like really hard on themselves. I don't even know. Um, okay, so over here we have Jupiter and the South Node, and they're actually exact today. They actually went exact just about um, an hour ago, but I put that on the community tab with the daily energies. This is... So the south node, you know, the north node is in Cancer, the south node is in Capricorn. And we talked about this way earlier this year, but the, um, the north node is about your destiny in this lifetime, what it is that your purpose. A lot of people say that, you, if, you know, if wherever your north node sits, like my north node is in the 11th house. The 11th house is about technology and the public eye and having innovative things and blah, 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 blah. The north node kind of says that's like what your fate is in this lifetime. Had I known that in this lifetime, I was supposed to be, according to my North Node, in the public eye, saying innovative things um, through a network on the internet with technology, if, I would have, if somebody would have said that to me was in my chart 20 years ago, I would have laughed my ass off and been like, you're crazy, you are insane. And today, I can tell you four different spots in my birth chart that say what I was, that I'm supposed to be doing exactly this. And that's how I, and that's how I can be so confident being in front of a camera and being like, I'm just going to say what I'm going to say because I've been, this gift was given to me and I'm going to share it. And if people don't like it, you know, what I'm saying? I'm, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. There you go. And I'm going to do it the best way that I can. Right? So that's what your North node is doing. If you, and, and so a lot of astrologers, when you kind of come to them and you're like, what is my purpose in life? They'll look at your North node, they'll look at your 10th house, all of that. I'm not going to get into it, but that's what your north node provides. The south node is the opposite. It is, a, you know, a lot of people who don't believe in past lives will say it's just about your childhood, but it's, it's the karmic lessons that we brought into this lifetime to learn. It's part of your soul contract. The south node, I would say the south node is basically the contract you wrote with yourself on the lessons you were supposed to learn, on the faded events you were supposed to go through, and like wherever that is, so like my north node is in Virgo in my 11th house, my south node is in Pisces in my sixth house, okay? So in my fifth house, uh, fifth house, sorry. So it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> so anyways, um, but that's where you can find a lot of the healing stuff, right? So with Jupiter conjunct the south node, Jupiter is what? Expansion. It actually rules the ninth house. Um, and so with these two conjunct together, we are literally expanding all of the karmic lessons that we brought into this life. And this only happens every 12 years, this kind of energy being exact today and us leading through it and getting it during eclipse season, because it's still conjunct. See, even on eclipse, it's still conjunct. It went exact today, but it's still, and conjunct is within three, like I do within three degrees. Okay. So um, within three degrees of the planet. So we're still, this is still activated. We're still getting the energy of Jupiter and the South Node. Okay, I gotta take a drink because I talk a lot. What's really funny is I don't have a timer on the Zoom. So I have, no, and I don't know when I started. So who knows how long this is gonna be. So really the biggest thing that I want to urge for you guys right now, because we've never been in this kind of energy before, and we're all getting a, a really amazing opportunity to heal. And, and it's going to be so uncomfortable, especially with that Jupiter on this. Like I've already found myself 
like going, you know what? No, Betsy, you are not going to do that. You're not going to do that to yourself. That is old and played out. It, I've already done that a couple of times today. But this is a day for yoga. This is a day for meditation. This is a day and to do it as many times as you need to, to stay grounded. I um, went outside even for a good 20 minutes this morning just to kind of clear my air and clear, clear my air, clear my head, breathe in fresh air, get myself grounded into mother, mother earth. Um, that is really going to be very, very helpful for you right now because this energy isn't going to go away. So it's, it's only going to heighten. Um, it'll probably start to lessen because I know somebody's going to ask, when is it going to be over? It'll probably lessen, um, honestly, I'm going to say like the beginning of February is when, and maybe before then, maybe the last week of January it'll be, but, but I mean, if you think about it, we've already been within two degrees, like the Saturn and Pluto have been within two degrees of each other for a good month now already. Like it started in December. Okay. Um, and maybe, maybe three weeks. So it's been within two degrees of each other for three weeks and that's carrying over. And you guys later on this year, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit when we jump over to Saturn and Pluto, um, later on this year, we're going to have, I mean, like, this isn't just the only conjunction of the year that we're going to have between these two planets. We're also going to have, um, the Jupiter and Saturn, um, conjunction again, when, Jupiter and Saturn move into Aquarius in December of 2020. Okay. And that's going to be expansive karmic energy as well. Okay. So Jupiter still has to conjunct with Saturn and Pluto also. Jupiter is going to conjunct with Pluto. Jupiter is going to conjunct with Saturn. And it's going, and the Jupiter and Saturn conjunction is going to be at zero degrees Aquarius together. So like, and Aquarius is like the 11th house, man, it's innovation, it's technology. And with Uranus in Taurus, can you imagine Uranus rules Aquarius? Oh, there's just going to be so, there's going to be set this year. <laughs> like astrologers, I kid you not, like this is how we're taking these, because they're not, they're not easy energies to get through, but to help us, we crack jokes. <laughs> like we're all kind of sitting back looking at the world going, uh-huh, we told you. <laughs> we said this was coming, but because y'all just got super excited that the new year was here. Hey, new year, new fun, new energy, time to clean it up. I'm just, you guys. All right. So let's open, let's look, let's look. Do I already have it open? No. Let's open up. Okay. This is the Saturn and Pluto conjunction. So I have this set and I set it at um, 7 p.m. Central on January 20th because I wanted you guys to see the, almost the, I mean like, I, it's like two seconds away, but I wanted to be so, I wanted to be really super exact. And so by the time we get here, there's Saturn at 22 degrees. And this again, January 12th. So this is actually, this is so funny. This is actually happening. I've got this set for the same time that we're going to be doing the meditation. So if y'all are like hurting <laughs> before Sunday's night and Sunday night's meditation, and if you already, if you did the pre-order for the workshop, you're already registered for the meditation. You do not have to do anything. You will receive um, the email with the link and all of that stuff for the meditation. But if you are feeling it and you need to get grounded and you need a little help in this energy, th these meditations are really, really, really good for that. So um, it's all on my website. It's on the front page, fearlessintuition.net. On the front page, it says meditation and Reiki healing circles. Okay. Um, and I think I only have next week's up right now. I don't have the entire month yet. I just have next week's up. Okay. So we have this 22, 22, 22. Notice how it's 2020 and all of these 20s are happening and all of these endings are happening and all of this. So I want to tell you um, the Saturn and Pluto conjunction, like it's famous for, for like being the beginning of wars. And so I'm, we're not really surprised at sort of what's happening in the U.S. now. We're not surprised that it happened during an election year. 
Not surprised the Saturn and Pluto conjunction is happening in election year. The last time this happened was in 1982. And um, that was, and I have my notes down here, that's what I'm looking at. And it was in the final degrees of Libra. And that it was actually at the end of the Cold War. And if you know with Libra, it's all about balance. So it was like closing out a karmic cycle to bring, to bring you know, Pluto and Libra um, brings balance. Saturn and Libra brings karmic balance, right? It's like the justice card, basically, with the little wheel of fortune, the one, the card that I have that has a little wheel of fortune above the justice lady. That's what, that's what Saturn and Pluto conjunction in Libra. And it's so funny because I was three <laughs> and I'm a Libra rising. So I was born, Pluto was still in Libra when I was born. And so that it happened in my first house. It's so funny because like, and actually I think it happened in my second house now that I think about it. Like if I were, I haven't done the chart, but all I'm thinking is like, I was three during the Saturn and last Saturn and Pluto conjunction, like my poor mom. I mean, if you've never had a three-year-old, you have no idea what I'm talking about, but a three-year-old on a year without a Saturn and Pluto conjunction <laughs> is, is, uh, hilarious <laughs> at, at best. Um, Okay. So, so having like all of this karmic and crazy and heavy energy and kids feel are feeling this. Like, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to pretend that kid. I mean, kids are probably feeling this harder than anybody else. Those sweet little people that have like are innocent and don't haven't built up a lot of karma yet are probably feeling a lot of this because the collective's energy is so harsh and kids feel everything, especially the kids these days, because they're all Neptune and Pisces babies and they're very psychic. I'm saying. Um, okay, so, but like um, one of the one of the biggest that thirty year war, and I'm going to go all the way back to 1618. One of the 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 first Saturn and Pluto conjunction that's quote unquote on record was the thirty year war that started in the Saturn and Pluto conjunction was in Taurus in 1618, and the war ended with the Saturn and Pluto conjunction in Gemini in 1648. So it was like literally like those two Saturn and Pluto conjunctions within that 30 year time frame um, was an entire frame of a war. So, um, and I think the biggest thing with all of this is knowing your, I've seen, I've seen where it's come up in my life in ways like my childhood, like I've been very nostalgic and I've been closing because it's in my fourth house, because I know the house that all of this activity is happening in. I can see it very clearly. There are a lot of closing out cycles with my family, with like long, long distance family members. There's a lot of closing out cycles with present family members. There's um, like my second, there's some closing out cycles with my second marriage that things were still sort of in the air after the divorce. Um, very interesting how, and, and it's very cut and dry, like there's no gray edge happening. So what I'm going to say to you guys, this is like a very quick astrology 101 lesson. When you get your birth chart, and if you do not have your time of birth or you don't know your time of birth, I would, and you, if, if you know morning or evening, just pick a time in the morning or evening. The closest you can get is the best, but if you don't know like at all, then I would just normally use noon, which isn't 100% accurate because it's you, you wanna know where your first house is in your birth chart. So I use time passages and I'm not being paid to use time passages. It's just my favorite application to use, um, but it costs money. So they do have a free demo that you can have your own chart. So if you look at astrograph.com, um, you can um, check out your chart from there. Um, they do like with the free demo and stuff. So you can do that. Um, the other thing is, um, so you want to find your first house. I was going to say something else with that, but so you want to find your first house and you don't. And so I, I don't want you to think of where the, they are, where the planets are in the signs. Like there is no such thing as Capricorn. Okay. Just throw that away just for a minute. There is a such thing as Capricorn, but just throw it away. Cause a lot of people will say, but I don't have any, I don't have Capricorn. Also, if you're looking at CoStar, CoStar will not, what, or CoStar is only telling you the houses that you have planets in, and that's not correct, because everybody has 12 houses. Everybody has 12 houses. If you are using the CoStar app, 
please do not go off of that. It is incorrect. I don't know how many times I have to say this to people. And every, all of the astrologers on Twitter are saying the same thing to people. Please do not use the CoStar app to do your astrology because it's telling you that you don't have energy in certain houses. So we're throwing the signs away. Now I want you to see like I'm a Libra rising and even though I'm a Libra rising, my first house is still in Libra. Some people are like a Taurus rising, but their first house is Aries or whatever. So that's, that's why you need to know where your first house is. And then I want you to find out where all of this stuff would be transiting from your first house. Okay. So all, so like if like my first house is in Libra or where my first house is, this is showing where all of my stuff is actually transiting in my fourth house, okay? When I look at my chart. And I'll show you my chart really quick, just to be fair. Just to show you. So see, my first house is right here. It's at 17 degrees Libra. For all of you that are taking screenshots right now to try to figure me out, go for it. This is your chance. This is your opportunity. See, I have empty, and they're quote unquote empty houses, but they're not really empty. You actually still have energies that flow through those houses. Um, sometimes they may even be stronger than the ones that have planets in them too. So don't let that fool you. So where all of this energy is happening, boom, 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 would be my fourth house, okay? And maybe even some of it is in my fifth house, but I'd have to do an overlay for sure to look. But, but we're really looking at like the planets and like the degrees and stuff. Like I have two planets at 23 degrees. These are going to be very much affected. See, my Jupiter and my Mercury are both in 23 degrees. So that's probably one of the reasons why I lost my voice. <laughs> and I might lose it again. Because, and, and this may be why technology is fucking with me so bad too. Because it's all in my 11th, you know. But, but it's happening in my fourth house and I work from home. See how that works? That was your really quick astrology lesson. Congratulations. Okay, let's get back to Saturn and Pluto. This is too fun for me. I love like my Virgo brain is literally exploding right now. I love it so much. All right, you guys. So we have Saturn, Pluto, the sun all at 22 degrees. We have Mercury at 23 degrees during the conjunction. Um, and uh, this is all opposite the moon in Leo, which happens to be at what? 22 degrees. Remember how we talked about, but this is going to be, uh, it's not opposite. Um, I believe this is a sunny sextile to it. So um, what's really interesting about all of this is your emotions will probably be at play. But Leo is very confident. It's a, uh, um, it's an inconjunct is what it is. But this is actually going to be like, some people are going to be over optimistic about, about some of this stuff. And some people aren't going to be able to see the red flags because all of the energy is going to be heightened with the Jupiter placement over here and the, the moon and Leo. Um, I don't know, you guys, it's so interesting to think about how everything is changing so much all at once. Like it feels like all of this stuff is changing all at once and it's not really. And that's why like everything isn't changing all at once. It just feels like a lot, you know? So take it one, like take your one day at a time, take it moment by moment. And again, like I said, if you're having a hard time living in the present moment right now, because your past is kind of haunting you and you're, I mean, like, I don't want you to not pay attention to the wounds and to the emotions and to the things that you need to close out. I'm going to, I'm back here. Hi. Um, all of those things that you really need to close out right now, I super want you to pay attention to that because there's nothing harder in, than um nothing harder in life than not admitting when you need to change something when it's like gotten to that point of no return where there's nothing else you can do to fix a situation to fix a problem to fix a relationship to whatever right sometimes you have to 
go through it. Most of the time you have to go through it and we have detoured enough. And now this Saturn and Pluto conjunction is telling us how we've detoured so many times over and over and over again. And the universe isn't playing around anymore. The cosmos aren't playing around anymore. Um, things are changing and they're, we're supposed to be changing. It's supposed to be evolving every single day. If you're having a really hard time with these energies, um, check out the workshops, check out the meditations, get a personal reading with me if you need some comfort. Uh, I have a really good team around me that's taking very good care of me as I'm taking very good care of them. Make sure you have that also. Make sure that you have people that can cleanse your energy if needed. Make sure that you have people that can give you that card reading at the drop of a hat if needed. Um, you know, take care of yourself also, not just everybody else. And I love you all so, so much. And thanks for listening to me. I don't even know how long I talked. So thanks for listening to me during all of this. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments or you can email me anytime. I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.